guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to be doing some harvesting and some garden maintenance. We're gonna start with harvesting some onions up here in the raised beds. I planted a handful up here and then the bulk of them are out in the big flower garden. Most of them I wanna say are not actually ready to harvest. Let me show you. So we've got a three by four raised bed right here and then I had a handful left and so I planted them at the end of this bed. Now you'll notice that a lot of them have bolted which is not a great thing. Um, when a plant bolts, it sends up a flower stalk right here. It's putting a lot of energy into trying to set seed because the plant was stressed. They started to do this when the temperatures got so hot, like close to 110, and it was like that for many, many days in a row. And I did notice that they started to bolt. I should have pulled them right away because what you wanna do is pull all of those, even if the onions aren't showing signs of being ready, because typically you wanna look for a stalk that's flopped over. Something more like this. So when the stalk starts getting soft and kind of yellowing and it flops over, then it means that that onion is done and ready to be harvested. Hey buddy. So this is actually what you want. This one did not bolt. This one's ready to go. This one will store the best. When plants bolt like this, their storage life goes down. So my plan for today, even if the stalks aren't flopped over like on that one, see like on this bolted onion here, if you follow it down, I mean, the stalk is still nice and tough. It is starting to yellow though. But either way, I'm gonna pull all of the bolted onions. It'll kind of work out perfectly. So I'll pull all the bolted ones and then any of the other ones that are showing signs of being ready to be pulled. And those will kind of be stored separately and we'll work our way through that batch of onions first because they won't store as long as the other ones that have not bolted. I'll be giving away a good portion of our onions as well because I grow a lot of them, way too many for us to work through. And since there's such a small amount up here, I'm just gonna go ahead and harvest all of these um, so that we can make room for a fall crop. I'm gonna grab a basket of some kind and a kneeling pad. I think that will be helpful. Didn't I have more than just one of these? Mm. I thought I picked up two. I don't recall. Well, I'm working on harvesting. Aaron's gonna be spreading soil acidifier. Spreading the stink around. It's real stinky. It I'm is. I'm gonna have to take a shower. Like, on purpose, didn't take a shower this morning. Uh -huh. Right after I get that, I'm gonna go take a shower. Right. That's well, nasty. Good luck to you. <laughs> Oh yeah, they're in here. They've got last year's onions in them. <laughs> that are trying to grow. Look at that. Let's take this one for now. Here we go. Out here in the big garden, you can see how many onions we have and they look so good, you guys. Look at this. Look at how big these onions are. I plant them pretty close together, about every six inches, and I did three rows. So if you look down in here, you can see we've got two rows of drip tape, one here and one here, and I planted one on the outer side of that drip tape, one in the middle, and then one on the outer side over here. And I feel like it really makes good use of the space out here and good use of the water. Not all of them are ready, so we're gonna leave the ones that could use a little bit more time. Um, but even some that haven't bolted, like if you look in here, you can see this one right here has not bolted, but it's starting to flop. So that one can come out. And then anything that has a bloom stock will come out today. But any that look like this, I mean, we're pretty darn close. They're starting to get a little bit squishy, but I'll give them a couple more days. Not that they really need it. Look at that onion. It is just huge, but the leaves are still green and upright and we've got no flop on those. One other thing about bolted onions that I forgot to mention before was that that flower stalk, it's coming up right through the center of the onion. So oftentimes, especially if you wait to harvest like I did, you know, I just haven't had time to come out here and do it. Um, it's been a about a week. Oftentimes they'll create a very like hard center in the onion that you have to remove uh, before you eat it, which I mean, the rest of it's totally fine and it's really not a big deal at all. Um, but 
that is, is something to consider. So if you notice your onions starting to bolt, like get them pulled right away and that way you can still utilize the whole thing. But yeah, if you were to feel this flower stalk, like it's pretty darn firm and it's starting to open up, like the blooms are starting to open. So anyway, down in here, that means that when we cut this open, we'll have to remove just a little tiny bit of the center, but the whole rest of the onion's great. Look at that, holy moly. I have a mixture of candy and Walla Walla onions, which I typically have really good luck with growing those two varieties. They are a higher sugar content onion, which makes them super delicious to eat, uh, but typically they don't store quite as long as some of your other types of onions. I know like uh, we grow a lot of onions in our valley here and they don't grow these kinds in the fields. They grow a different kind that have a much longer shelf life, but they're not as tasty as these. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna work my way through these onions real quick. Now we're gonna take this load to the area behind the barn so that we can lay them all out. Oh my goodness you guys look at this and this is just the beginning isn't that a thing of beauty it's actually kind of perfect because we have some of our tabletops empty at the moment you can see the construction is just two by four with hardware cloth we made a video it's been some years ago showing how we make our tables for the inside the greenhouse except for those have wheels and a base these right here we just put on cinder blocks outside for any plant overflow uh, because we don't have as many plants right now we've got some of these tabletops empty which makes for the perfect drying rack for these. And this is the north side of the barn. In fact, the AC unit for our root cellar is right here. It just turned on, so I apologize if it's kind of loud, but it's perfect because they can sit out here in a shady spot to dry for a few days, usually like, I don't know, anywhere between three to five days. Um, and once these are dry, my other onions will probably be ready to harvest. So we'll clear these off, get them prepped for storage, and then move our next batch in here. But what they'll do when they sit here and dry, you can see areas where they have a skin that's a little bit more fresh. Uh, they'll dry up a little bit, which will help protect the onion bulb and help them store a little bit longer, even though they are bolted and they won't store as long as our others. Uh, they'll store longer if we let them dry. They'll also accumulate, like they'll uh, soak in energy. So we still have some really fresh roots here. They'll soak in energy from the roots and they'll soak in energy from the green leaves into the bulb, uh, which helps with the sugar content and all of that business. So uh, at the end of our few days letting them dry, we'll come in and we will trim off the roots, we'll trim off the stalk, and then we'll move them into baskets into the root cellar, which is, you know, right there. I just did a rough count. It looks like we have around 115 onions sitting here and we have at least that many, if not more, out in the garden uh, to come over here yet. And I always try to, um, estimate how many we're going to go through. I mean, you saw earlier how many were left in that basket from last year. I still use those even though they're sprout sprouted with green leaves. Um, most of them are pretty firm still and I still use on them. So that's a year later. They're not in perfect condition, but I think that's a pretty good shelf life. Okay, guys, we've got beans and peppers left to harvest today. Here's our row of peppers right here. We've got a mix of varieties. Oh, there's a monarch. You guys, a monarch. <gasps> oh, yay. Oh, that just makes my day. It's right there on the zinnia. When I see things like that, I feel like I'm doing something right. Anyway, I've got a mix of varieties of peppers. I don't even know where I was at with that. I have been harvesting them right along the way here, so I don't know how many I have that are actually ripe and ready to go. I know a lot of the bell peppers probably are not ready, but I do have quite a number of hot peppers that we can harvest today. Red bells, I've been harvesting the most of. 
looks like we might have some orange bells in here that might be ready. See some color down there. Uh, yellow bells we have here somewhere. Maybe. Did we get yellow bells this year? I thought we did. Well, there's some red bells. Got some green bells forming up. And then we've got some like snacker type peppers, some sweet ones in here. Oh yeah. Then we've got some Thai chilies and we've got a whole bunch of jalapenos in here. A whole bunch. And then hot and heavies. You guys, these are one impressive plant right here. It almost looks like more pepper than plant. We'll harvest some of those today too. And then whatever cucumbers we have that might be ready. There's a few in here. My plants are pretty small. Oh my, oh, <laughs> the one for the chickens, my goodness. So here's our pepper harvest for the day. Amazing on the California Wonder Bell peppers, my goodness. Look at those. Red bells, not quite as many, but like I said, I've been harvesting, well, I've been harvesting all of these right along the way and we eat the most of the red bells. The Thai chilies, we just had a small handful ready. This is a variety called Golden Treasure and it's actually a sweet one. They're really tasty. I did pick a couple of, of them that were kind of green because like this one looks a little puckered and this one's got an end that's kind of weird. So anyway, we'll eat those. And then we've got hot and heavies right here. These are the ones that were ready. Quite a nice pile of them. Jalapenos, oh my gosh, there are hundreds on those plants out there. I am not exaggerating. There are hundreds on those plants out there. It's just absolutely insane, but we can't go through that many peppers that quickly. And I'm not ready to do any preserving today or even tomorrow. So I'll leave them on the plants and pick them when I'm ready. And then we've got three more varieties of sweet peppers, the snacker type. This is a variety called sweet cherry. These are so tasty. And then a variety called, I think it's like mini chocolate or something chocolate. Anyway, these are really good too and they're pretty. Look at these, really pretty color. And then this is a variety called Jingle Bell. Aren't those cute? Nice, thick walled, really sweet peppers. And then there's my cucumber take for the day. We got one for the chickens. I missed that one, clearly. And then we've got two to take inside. This is the variety Su Yao. Uh, Su Yao Long. And they're just really like, they don't come out straight every time, but they've got a really a firm center, which I like. But these, oh my goodness gracious. I'm gonna have to do some freezing, I think. I'm gonna put these back in their baskets and then they're gonna go to the root cellar until we are done uh, picking today and then I'll take everything inside. Real quick, on our way to the root cellar, I just stopped and checked on the corn here in the maize garden. And I just want to pick a few ears for dinner this evening. Look at how beautiful this is. This is ambrosia. It's a bicolor, super sweet, super delicious corn. Yeah, check out the corn in this area. This whole space is so fun and it provides a really nice screen right here. But the first seating of corn is on the interior of the ranch panels that we put up. And then the second seating has some size on it. Let me see, it is a little bit more shaded though. But you can see that it's growing, 
it's coming along. But these right here, you come in and you can see that the silks are starting to brown. Yep, gorgeous. Okay, the last things I want to harvest today are the beans, which we've got right here. There are two varieties. We've got dragon's tongue right here, which just a few plants of those. The rest of them, the majority of them are the jade variety. And these are really good beans, you guys. They're tender. They always come out straight like this, so they're easy to preserve. Like they're easy to fit into jars if that's what you like to do with them. I know I've got some overgrown ones in here too because it's been a while since I've picked. And those go all the way to where they are completely covered up by the butternut squash plants. Whoever thought it was a good idea to plant butternut squash right in the middle of the cut flower garden? And I thought, oh, I'll train them. <laughs> I'll make sure you can still walk through here. They're actually planted in this row and they're covering up this row of flowers and they're growing out into the pathway over there. They're very productive. There are a lot of butternut squash in here though, you guys. It's gonna be a good harvest, I think. But it looks like the jades go to about right here. Got some chocolate flowers in here though. That's exciting. I had a heck of a time getting these chocolate flowers to germinate, but oh, they do, they smell just like chocolate. They're awesome. I gotta get Benjamin out here. Oh, it's almost lunchtime. <laughs> While we are out here, I'll probably just scour the strawberry row. I just picked them yesterday, but I can see some more that may have ripened up since then. And then we'll check the blackberries as well. We got forget-me-nots over here. I didn't plant these. I planted these last year. Oh, that's exciting. I gotta get these cut and use them. Beautiful. Cosmos are looking good and our potatoes need to be harvested next week, I think. got all of our harvesting done so I've got some beans and fruit here and it's been just such a nice morning now at some point while I was picking things my microphone shut off like my battery ran out and I didn't realize it so I apologize if the audio is horrible I'm not sure at what point that happened either way though it's just been it's just been so nice I did feel like I was gonna be out there for days picking beans though it takes forever but look at them oh my goodness I did find a few, like four, <laughs> dragon's tongue beans. Aren't they pretty? I've never cooked with these type of beans before, not that I can really cook much with, oh, there's five here, with five beans, but either way, it was exciting to find those and see how pretty they are. But these jade beans are just intense producers, you guys, just crazy. Um, I've already been picking on these. I mean, it's just a constant. There's also a ton of little ones on the plant that, you know, I couldn't harvest today. So it's kind of a constant deal until the end of the season. Not the most ideal basket for picking beans, I have to say. I should have come in and got a different basket. I think, you guys, I'm just gonna hang a bunch of harvest baskets right here because I use them out here and I think that would be pretty and it would look good in a flower shed, kind of like that. And then I did get a few strawberries. That's about as many as I thought I was gonna get since I picked them just last night. I don't know how I miss stuff, but I just do. Have a few little blackberries there off of our brand new baby plants that we planted this spring and one Santa Rosa plum. There's one more left on the tree. You can see the tree right there. That's our Santa Rosa plum. And they are so good. They are just the best plums. Uh, they aren't, like this one's not that big. I've had other ones off that same tree this year that were twice this size. So I don't know if it just needs some time. You know, it hasn't had regular irrigation until right now. Uh, about, I don't know, was it was two weeks ago they finished the irrigation in the orchard and we've started to spread a little bit of compost. So see right in there, we're actually bringing in more so we can really level up this area and then we're gonna seed it. That will be an exciting day. I cannot wait to have the orchard full of 
grass and just have it look really, I don't know, really pretty and not just dirt and weeds. I'm not planning on processing any of these. We'll eat some fresh tonight and probably over the next couple of days. And Erin's mom is actually on her way over here to get some of these as well as some corn uh, to take to her house and then I'll give the rest away. We'll eat every bit of this. <laughs> me and the kids. We're kind of in the middle of bean picking season at the moment. I mean, those plants will keep on producing. So, you know, if I decide to preserve, freeze, or can any of them later on, uh, when maybe things quiet down a little bit in the garden, I always say that it's gonna quiet down and never really does. There's always things to be doing. Um, anyway, yeah, all that said, I may or may not preserve some this year. <laughs> but we sure enjoy eating them fresh. And I think that's gonna be it, you guys. It's actually pretty hot today. I think it's 100 degrees out. Um, and I was gonna do some maintenance, but I think at this point, I'm just gonna need to go around and water things, make sure everything is happy in that department. Um, and then I'll probably duck inside for the hottest part of the afternoon a little bit later on. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. What a fun thing just to come out and harvest um, and just look at some of this produce. It's always a, a good time. And then, like I said, we've got all of those well, you saw all the onions we still have to harvest and then we're, we've got the huge uh, potato patch. That's going to be a job and a half. Whew. We've got to do that next week, probably. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.